do so. You see in your notes, the main issue I want you to leave here with today isn't the armor pieces, but it's the spiritual pieces of the armor that I want to focus on more here. We need to receive strength and power from the Lord. That takes humility. You have to say, God, I can't do it without you. God loves that kind of prayer. God, I am weak without you. I don't have the wisdom without you. I don't have the fortitude without you. I don't have the patience at work without you. I need your strength. I need your might. And that, that takes humility to receive it. Secondly, it takes obedience. Put it on. Put on the strength and, and power. And the third point is you put it on so that you can stand strong. Stand in that strength and power. It's interesting. Look what he says. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Stand against his schemings. The Greek word is methodia. It's where we get the word methods. Stand against his methods. And you know, you could, you could do singular. He really only has one method. He started it in Genesis 3 and he carries it all the way through Revelation. He has one scheme and one method and from that comes everything else that he does and it's called deception. It's called deception. He likes to deceive people. I know people that think they're married to the enemy and they're not. He's deceived people into thinking they're married to the enemy. There are children today who, who think their parents hate them and their parents don't hate them. This is serious stuff. We need to be able to stand. We don't need to run and run into the battle. We need to stand in the battle. Sometimes holding your ground is victory. I don't know how the Tennessee game ended yesterday. Probably not good. I do know how it began, but it was a tough, it was a tough night. Tough night at the uh, funeral home and tough night for a lot of people. So I don't know how it ended, but it, I know it started well. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to give a football analogy because sometimes I think Satan deceives us Christians into thinking we're not doing well when we are. And so I think, think of a, a, of a, of a team on offense and they run a play and they don't get any yards. They, they, stood, they got stood up and they didn't make any progress. First down. Second down, they do a similar play and don't make any progress. Third down, they don't get any progress either. So what do you do on fourth down? You punt. You didn't make any progress, so you punt. And so those of you that, I don't know if it's just a sports mind or sports background, but I think for a lot of people, if you aren't making progress in your faith, there are, that you're going to think that you are losing something. And there are times when the battle is raising, raging so strong that if you hold your ground, you're winning. Yeah. And Satan's going to say, you have to punt now. But you know what you say to Satan? It's not football. Yeah. And we don't have to punt. There are times the spiritual battle is so strong that all you've got to do, you just brace yourself. And you hold your ground and you stand in the strength of the Lord. That's what he's saying here. He says it three times. That we might be able to stand. And, and what's the opposite of stand? Fall. He wants us to fall. He wants us to go down. For we do not wrestle. We do not struggle against flesh and blood. We, it's not people that are the enemy. But it's principalities and powers, rulers of, this, of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. We've got two kinds of people in the world when it comes to Satan. Those who say he's a figment of your imagination. He's deceived those people. And they'll laugh at us for believing in an enemy. And then there are others who believe that he is more powerful than Jesus. And a fellow named Antoine LaVey who started the Church of Satan, and he wrote the Satanic Bible, and there's a following, and you can see how he could deceive many and say, look at the world, tell me who's more powerful. Same thing happens in the book of Revelation. In some places, his scheme is that he doesn't exist. In other places, his scheme is that he's more powerful. He'll do whatever it takes. Therefore, verse 13, take up the whole armor of God. When we get to them, you need to be covered head to toe. Head to toe. Take up the whole armor of God. When, if you're not doing this, if you're not going through this checklist in your spiritual life, you're going to take hits that you shouldn't be taking. And you do it so that you may be able to withstand 
in the evil day, and having done all, to what? Stand. What's verse 14 say? Stand therefore. Four times. Stand your ground. Stand your ground. Don't lose ground. You may not have to gain it all the time, but don't lose any ground. What about this evil day? What does that mean? Well, look, go back to 5, what is it, 515? Go back to 515. You remember that? In 515, Paul tells us to walk in wisdom, and he says, See then that you walk circumspectly, which is another fancy word for carefully. See that you're careful how you walk, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Evil days began in Genesis 3 for human beings. They began before that with Satan who fell before that. But for us, Genesis 3 began the days being evil. And evil is all around us. And if you are not paying attention as a soldier, if you are not well equipped and well trained, you are going to fall in against evil and not be ready for it. What would you do if our United States of America decided that they were going to totally shut down the military, but they wanted all the military to be on call. They're not on base. They're not going into training. They're just on call. Go do your stuff. If war breaks out, we'll give you a call. It may seem like that would be better for the home and the family and the church. Why can't we do that? Because we won't be ready when the war breaks out. And we have Christians who, who have that same mindset. Why do we, stru why do we uh, study? Why do we uh, pray? Why do we get into church? Because when the war breaks out, you've got to be ready. You can't muster it up. I've seen people go through tragic things and, and they tried to hurry up and gain strength. You can't do it, folks. We've got to be strong. Do we believe that we're in a war? I hope so. Do we believe that we're being attacked? And Wouldn't that motivate you? You know why a soldier gets up at 5 in the morning? Because he knows he's going to he's gonna get shot at that day. A soldier at war. He probably hears the, the bullets flying over his head. He hears the ar artillery. You, you think soldiers want to get up at 5 in the morning? People get up because sur it, it's survival. People say to me, I can't get up and read my Bible in the morning. Are you kidding me? Y y yes, you can. You don't understand the war. You don't understand the war. You've got to get up when you don't feel like it. You've got to do the things you're supposed to do. And when you're at war, it's not always convenient. The food's not all that great at war, I bet. And by the way, that's why they feed you at the mess tent. Be my guess as a non-military person. And, and I don't know.